So the first source of power dissipation in CMOS circuit is nothing but dynamic power dissipation. As by the name itself, it is clear that the dynamic power dissipation occurs when there is some activity is happening in the circuits. That means when the device is in functional mode and some processing is happening. So always remember in VLSI chips, we have nothing but some circuits. And for example, we have some AND gate, we have some buffers, we have some AND gate or some, the, the circuit like this. So what happens is whenever there is some processing happenings or some activities happenings, these nodes are basically either charging or discharging based on the functionality of this circuit. So for example, this is an inverter and when there is a rising pulse applied at the inverter, the output we will have a falling pulse. So always remember that the input node, this is and this is not gate and the not gate input will have associated input capacitor and the output will also have associated output capacitor. So the charging of, of discharging is nothing but charging and discharging of these node capacitors. So whenever there is a activity happening in the circuit, these nodes are either charging or discharging. And when they charge and discharge, there is power dissipation associated with that. We will see how in our next slide. So this is where we have taken an example of an inverter. This is the inverter circuit. And if here we apply a falling edge at the input side, at the output we will have a rising edge pulse. That means our V out is basically going from 0 to supply voltage, some voltage VDD. So that means this is nothing but the charging of this load capacitance. So when there is a high to low pulse, this NMOS basically is going to be off and the PMOS here will be on. So this is on and this is off. So the current will flow like this. That means this load capacitance will charge. So guys, here we saw that when we apply a voltage across the capacitor, the capacitor stores some energy and that energy is nothing but half C VDD square. This is the energy stored in the capacitor. But how much energy this VDD source is going to apply? So if you see in this circuit, there is nothing but this voltage source and then we have this capacitor. Because this is off and this is on. Ideally, if we take the case of ideal PMOS transistor, then let's say that this is short circuit and we only have this VDD and this CL load capacitance. So now let's see how much energy this voltage source is supplying. So if we see here the EVDD, the energy supplied by the voltage source is nothing but for a long time IT VDD into DT. The current following through this circuit into VDD into DT. That is nothing but the power. The integration of power is nothing but the energy. So if we put the current, the current is nothing but there is only capacitance and the current across the capacitance is nothing but C into dV by dt. So if we put the formula of Cl dV by dt into VDD, that will become Cl and VDD. These are constants and 0 to infinite, 0 to VDD dV. That is nothing but Cl into VDD square. So guys, if you see here carefully, the total energy supplied by this voltage source is nothing but Cl VDD square. And how much energy this capacitor will store inside? It is going to store half Cl VDD square. That means where is the another half Cl VDD square energy? So guys, the half Cl VDD square energy got dissipated across this PMOS transistor and the internal resistance of this load capacitor. So this is very important point here. The total energy supplied by the VDD source is nothing but Cl into VDD square and half of that energy is going to stored in the capacitor and half of the energy is basically got dissipated across the PMOS resistance and the internal resistance of this Cl. So this half Cl VDD square energy which got dissipated is nothing but the power dissipations during dynamic activity. That means when the charging happened actually, the total energy which the voltage source supplied was Cl VDD square from which half Cl VDD square basically got stored here, but the half Cl VDD square got dissipated. And now during the discharging, what will happen during the discharging, the PMOS transistor will be off and this and most transistor will be on and the stored in stored energy Cl VDD square will be basically getting dissipated across the resistance of this 
and most transistor and or and the internal resistance of this load capacitor so during charging half cl vdd square power got dissipated or energy got dissipated and during discharging another half cl vdd square which was stored in the capacitor is also got dissipated so this power dissipates when this power dissipation happens basically it results in heat development so whenever there is a activity happening in the circuit or the circuit is functioning or it is processing something it will always dissipate some power and that power will cause heat effects so this is the first factor or the first first source of power dissipation in cmos circuits now how we can minimize this we cannot completely remove this power dissipation but we can minimize this power dissipation how we can minimize this power dissipation we will see in more details in further discussion so if you see here this is this that's just i have put whatever we have discussed here when when the gate output rises energy is drawn from the supply need to be charged at the capacitor is evdd which is nothing but clvdd square and energy stored in capacitor is nothing ec which is nothing but half clvdd square so the half the energy from vdd is dissipated in the pmos transistor as heat other half is stored in the capacitor and when the gate output falls the energy in capacitor is dumped to ground basically this energy stored will be dumped to ground and it will dissipated as heat in the nmos transistor so this is the first source of power dissipation in cmos circuits now let's see the average power dissipation so here we saw during the charging and discharging now let's see if there is a continuously charging and discharging happening so what will be the average power dynamic power so this we call as a dynamic power dissipation and what will be the formula of dynamic power dissipation in general the formula will become if we take the average G one by t zero to t i d t in d d into v d d. Let's take the example of this inverter circuit itself. So this will be the dynamic power dissipation. If we solve this problem, this will be the v d d is nothing but constant. It will become this, and here we will put the formula of i across the capacitor, which is nothing but c d v by d t. And if we put this, this will be the result. This terms we have just I have put the extra, which is nothing but one actually. T is T into switching frequency. Switching frequency is half one by is also one by T. So T and T will remove. So this is nothing but one. But I have put this to put this frequency term in the last formula. So if you see the dynamic power dissipation is nothing but given as C V D D square into F, which is nothing but how frequently the charging and discharging is taking place. Or if you see in another words, what is the waveforms looks like? at the input of this inverter so whenever the input of this inverter is switching at a frequency of f switch what will be the dynamic power dissipation the dynamic power dissipation will be c vdd square into f switching so guys this formula is very important from interview perspective and always remember that dynamic power dissipation is given as c vdd square into f switching frequency now let's see some points here suppose the system clock frequency is f and let's see the switching frequency is alpha f where alpha is the activity factor so the meaning of this here is our circuit is suppose working at a frequency of f and the signal for which we are calculating the dynamic power dissipation is also switching at the rate of this frequency f that means our f switching will become f and in that particular case our alpha is nothing but 1 but if our circuit is actually working at frequency f and the signal for which we are calculating our dynamic power is switching once per clock cycles in that particular case our alpha will become half and the p dynamic will be half c square into f switching so as you can see here the dynamic power is directly proportional to the switching frequency this switching frequency is nothing but switching frequency of the signal for which we are interested in the dynamic power so guys hope this switching activity factor is clear here